All right, so let's talk about how to start a telemedicine practice, shall we? What's going on? Yuri here from Healthpreneur. We help health practitioners and coaches build six, seven, and eight figure virtual health practices. And if you're a doctor or a health practitioner or coach, thinking of setting up a telemedicine practice, or if you're going to call it a coaching business or a virtual health practice, in my mind, it's all the same thing. Uh, I want to show you how to do that here. Okay. What I'm not going to talk about are insurance codes and stuff like that, because all of the clients that we work with are cash based. I don't recommend insurance. That's just me personally. How you run your business is completely up to you. Nonetheless, what I'm about to share with you is going to serve you. So first and foremost, let's talk about what you do with your existing patients. When uh, the whole pandemic hit in 2020, one of the things that we provided for our clients was a series of email campaigns we call the stimulus package email campaigns. And what they were was a series of emails that they would send to their patients existing from a brick and mortar practice and showing them how to pivot to virtual services. And that's the easiest first place to start is you take the existing people you're working with and you let them know, hey, we can do this virtually. Ta-da! Now, obviously, it's a little bit easier if you're a knowledge-based, speaking-only type of practitioner where you're not hands-on. But even if you are hands-on, there's many, many ways you can help people in a virtual telemedicine type of fashion. The only limitation is your own imagination, okay? We've helped physical therapists and chiropractors and massage therapists and acupuncturists build thriving virtual practices so if they can do it why can't you all it is is you got to think outside the box okay because you've got knowledge beyond what you do with your hands so the first thing is looking at pivoting in some way shape or form some of your patients or all of them if you want to virtual services that's the first easiest place to start that can happen in the grand total of one day hey I'm helping people virtually, one in, great. <laughs> Here's my booking link, done. Don't worry about getting everything on the back end, like all, like all your ducks in a row, okay? You don't need to take years to get this set up. It's like a decision and the next day you're live online, that's it. The more you delay, the longer your, your patients suffer. Just put it that way, okay? So that's the first way. The second way is to obviously look at, okay, well, Outside of my existing patient base, what if I want to serve people in the city or in the province or state, around the country, or even worldwide? Obviously, there might be some jurisdictional issues with that that I'm not going to get into here, but obviously, I'm sure you're aware of them. So whether or not, let's just say you can't cross state boundaries or, or provincial lines. I get this so often. When the pandemic hit, we had so many people, like our business exploded because, you know, this is what we do. And so many practitioners are like, but I can't practice outside my state. This isn't going to work for me. I'm like, great. We'll enjoy being out of business. Right? But think about this. I live, in, I live in Toronto, which is in Ontario, which is, for those of you who don't know, the province or the state in Canada. And there's, what, 10 million people, I think, in Ontario. So I don't know about you, but... Um, I've never met a practitioner who served 10 million people in their brick and mortar practice. And it's so funny how some people think, they're like, oh, I can't do anything because I'm confined by my state lines. Your state might have, even if your state had 500,000 people, that's more people you can serve in 10 lifetimes. So do not let jurisdictional nonsense get in the way of you helping people in a way that is completely legal and ethical and all that good stuff. So that's the first thing, just kind of push all the nonsense to the side because I've seen so many practitioners completely lose track of what's important, worrying about LLC or this or jurisdictional stuff. Yeah, that stuff is important, but it's not the main focus. The main focus is always going to be First, how do I move my patients virtually if I want to? Second, how do I get new ones? And the new ones coming in, well, that's going to come down to three things. Single target market, your message, and your magic. That's it. Single target market. It doesn't matter if you can help everyone. It doesn't mean you should. It's really simple. 
Does a generalist get paid more than a brain surgeon? Uh, no. If you can find one, please let me know. The reason that doesn't happen is because a generalist is a generalist and people don't pay a premium for generalists. Do you wanna be a generalist or do you wanna be a specialist? It's a pretty simple question. So the thing, the, bound, the, the, the resistance on this is, well, I'm gonna alienate people. Do you think a brain surgeon alienates people? 99.99% uh, .99 of the population, yeah, because they don't need his or her services. But those who do only wanna work with him or her. So it's your choice. You can be a jack of all trades and master of none and have a very, very difficult business to market, especially online. See, when you, you have to understand when you have a virtual business, no one sees your business. No one walks down the street and sees your clinic. That doesn't happen online. You can spend 10, 15, $20,000, or I should, I should say flush that money down the drain on a beautifully designed website that no one is ever gonna see. I was actually speaking with someone the other week and they said they invested $15,000 in a newly designed website. I asked them, how much traffic do you get to your website on a monthly basis? They said, I don't know. And I, and I, and I, like, I questioned them, I'm like, are you for real? You don't know how much traffic you get to your website and you spend $15,000 on making it look pretty? I'm like, here, go to this website, similarweb.com, tell me how much traffic you have to your website. And you know what it said? N-A, not available or not applicable. Do you know what that means? If you do a search for your own domain and you see not available or not applicable, it means you don't even have enough traffic for them to even track. And that means a few hundred people or less. Okay? So don't be wasteful. You, like the logos, the business cards, the office chairs, the what color are we gonna paint the walls? All that stuff is getting the ducks in a row and avoiding the inevitable, which is potential rejection. When I say potential rejection, what I mean by this is single target market, okay? You identify a single group of people with one problem or pain that you're gonna become the expert to. Next is you put a message in front of them, a message in the form of some type of marketing. It could be a Facebook ad, could be a social post, could be whatever you want it to be, but that message needs to speak directly to that single target market, that single person. And then it's gonna invite them to the next step, which is maybe having a call with you to see if there's a good fit. And here's where the rejection comes in. What if my marketing doesn't work? What if I get on the phone and people say no to me? What if I call someone and they hang up and I tell them my price? Hey, you can keep getting certified and you can keep playing the delay of the inevitable game, okay? But we're not getting ahead by doing that stuff. You have to be willing to put yourself out there and position yourself as an expert in one specific area. Think of your business and you, your brand, as a chest of drawers. Which drawer do you wanna occupy in your client's minds? So do you wanna be the sock drawer, the underwear drawer, the t-shirt drawer, right? Metaphorically speaking, you have to build your brands, you, your expertise around one thing that when people think of that, they think of you. Healthpreneur, we only work with health practitioners who want to build online. So when someone's having a conversation and they're like, yeah, like I'm sick and tired of this brick and mortar business, I want to go online. The first thing that should come into that person's mind is, oh, I got to talk to Yuri at Healthpreneur. That's the first and only thing that that person should have a conversation around. And that's my job, that's our company's job to infiltrate your mind and continue to do so until it becomes second nature. And that's what you need to do as well with your market is when someone says, I have this pain or this problem, immediately they think of you. And that doesn't happen by you sitting back and hoping people walk in the virtual door because it's not gonna happen. So let's just recap how to start a telemedicine practice. Number one, you tap into your existing patient base. You ask them, hey, would you be interested in doing some stuff virtually? Here's how this works. It's really simple. You book in a session or a, a program for a length of time for a specific outcome, here's the price, here's what it looks like, we're gonna jump on Zoom, I'm gonna have some modules that you can go through on your own in between our sessions, or, and, and, or, second piece is you start scratch or you start from scratch or you build on that existing patient base 
by going out to the market and acquiring new clients to come in. And we do that actually through a perfect client pipeline. If you're interested in that, click the link in the description. I'll walk you through how it all works. So you can have a flood of people who've never heard of you within the space of a couple of days raising their hands to want to work with you. Most of our clients, and we've been doing this for a very long time now, our clients have generated more than $100 million in revenue using this process. And now, again, like, I'm not just talking about revenue. I'm talking about the tens of thousands of people who they have not just like touched, but fundamentally transformed their health because they've worked with them in such a fashion that has been transformational. I'm not talking about here's a book, have you know all the best. I'm talking about walking them through a transformational program in a virtual setting, okay? From their home, from their vacation house, while they travel, like wherever, it doesn't matter, okay? And if you'd like that as well, you can completely do that. Do not let your designation get in the way of your destiny. When I came online in 2005, I was a certified kinesiologist and the association, which I won't name it, just you know, for, for the sake of just keeping things clean, they said, hey, Yuri, you can't do this online. And you know what I said? I said, here, take your letters, this whatever stuff back here, take those back. I don't need them because you're going to keep me playing small in a clinic, helping people and burning out in the process. Instead, I came online. My first business, we helped half a million people to better health. With Healthpreneur, we've helped thousands of practitioners. And in so doing, they've helped tens of thousands of their patients and clients. I think I made the right choice. I'm not saying to give up your designation. I'm just saying do not let stuff like that get in the way of the bigger dreams that you have. Does that make sense? So if it does, that's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this. Remember to subscribe to the channel because I'm here to give you the best of the best of the best to help you build a successful virtual health practice and really make your dreams happen. Thanks so much for your time. I'll see you soon. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? If so, I've got a great free training to help you get more clients and grow your virtual health practice or your coaching business, however you like to define it. I may have alluded to this before. It's called the Perfect Client Pipeline and it's our proprietary four-step process that will help you predictably and consistently get clients literally on demand 24 seven. Now I know I make it sound easy. Obviously it's not, but it is simple. And I wanna show you how it all works. If you're a health expert or a practitioner who knows you can be doing more in your business and you just want a better way to reach more clients without the grind, and by the grind I mean posting on social media all day long or creating content no one sees, I understand it's exhausting. So click the link in the description below. Let me show you exactly the Perfect Client Pipeline, how it all works and how it's been responsible for generating more than $100 million for our clients who are health experts just like you. Click the link below and I'll see you there.